Welcome to another edition of Journey of Hope. Thrilling stories of people that have made an impact, been impacted by the healing ministry of Loma Linda University Medical Center, or people that have made an impact upon Loma Linda University Medical Center. Each day, hundreds and hundreds and hundreds of people come to different aspects of Loma Linda University Medical Center seeking health and hope and healing and wholeness. Our special guest today is Ruthita Fike. CEO of the Medical Center and all of the different complexes that are involved. And I thought it would be good for our listening audience to go behind the scenes and learn some of the great things that are happening here at Loma Linda University Medical Center. With Theta, it's good to have you here. We've got people from around the world that are watching and we're often interviewing different patients that have been impacted. But I thought it'd be good to kind of get a behind the scenes and kind of an overview of what's really happening here at the medical center. But before we do that, I know you came six, six and a half years ago. Tell us a little bit about your background before you came. Well, first of all, it's so nice to be here. I'm such a appreciative supporter and listener to LLBN and its programming and your program as well. So uh, I'm very glad to be here. Right. And uh, the six and a half years that I've been at Loma Linda have just flown by. Uh, it doesn't seem possible. <laughs> it really doesn't. Uh, I started out really my, my career in teaching English in College View Academy in, in Lincoln, Nebraska, moved to Union College and then moved to the health systems that was headquartered in, in Kansas City, worked at Shawnee Mission Medical Center and then moved to Denver to uh, serve as CEO for the Porter and Littleton hospitals and then eventually to Centura Health which manages those hospitals in Denver. And then Dr. Lynn Behrens successfully recruited my husband and myself here and uh, we have truly enjoyed our journey here. Well, it's, it's been an amazing journey since you've been here for the entire institution. And I think it'd be well for us to kind of give us an overview of some of the things that are happening because there are so many, many things that are happening that are making such a positive impact upon, not only upon the Inland Empire, but really around the world as people are coming from uh, across the country and around the world seeking medical help here at the, uh, at the medical center. So tell us, kind of give us an overview of what's happening here. Well, I'd like to do that. Um, I referenced Dr. Behrens a minute ago, and I should say one thing. I had a, a, a discussion with her last week. I actually asked a favor for her to help us with a new hospital that I'm going to talk about here in a moment. And she made the comment that these are such strange times that we're living in, uh, in the world, and certainly in America with all the economic downturn. And California is so incredibly challenged. And the challenges we're facing for health reform on a national basis have made this a really, really um, difficult time in, in some ways, and yet it's presented so many different opportunities for us. So what I thought we might do today was just to give you an overview uh, of really what all we are doing at the Medical Center and the various different organizations that we put under that term, sure. uh, the Loma Linda University Medical Center. And I, I brought some slides. Oh, I, so I, uh, I would like to maybe reference those, starting with um, our mission and our vision, uh, our value statements that we have on those slides. One of the things that I have observed since I've been at Loma Linda that we hear all the time. When we have joint commission here for accreditation, when we have CMS, our federal or, or state surveyors here, usually within a day, they will say to us, we sense that the organization makes its decisions and that people here can articulate the mission and the vision and the values of the organization. And uh, I often tell people that we want to build on that historic strength I love the quote that those who drink uh, the water remember to, need to remember those who dug the well. And uh, I think that's a really beautiful Great. quote. And yeah. I would give testimony in the mission and the vision that over 100 years ago was started with people and that we try so hard to continue to, to build on as we have these opportunities. Remaining faithful to what we started here 100 years ago. Then. Exactly. Yeah. Uh, being the only overtly Christian academic health science center in the United States really does carry a responsibility and so being mindful and intentional about that with everything we do. Um, we really do work at and I think we stand on the shoulders of those who came before us. Sure. Uh, I thought I'd give you an overview of what makes up the medical center. Yeah. We use that term and usually people think that's a the single organization. Yeah. 
And actually it's five different hospitals and it's soon to be six. Uh, we are right now, uh, as you can see on the slide, about 960 licensed beds currently and uh, in the spring of next year we're going to bring on another 106 uh, beds so that we'll be actually over a thousand beds. Wow. I, um, in terms of the scope of what that means for the medical center portion of it, uh, we have over 7,000 employees. Of course, we serve the students. Uh, primary responsibility for us is to be the teaching lab for, for students. So on um, any quarter, or in any quarter, we have over a thousand students that are somewhere within those five facilities. That are being trained here. That are being trained. Yeah. So okay. it'd be physicians and nurses and respiratory therapists and others that are in one of our hospitals during that quarter. Um, a lot, residents do a great deal of our work. They write many of the orders and we're an important training for them and we have 600, over 600 residents in 26 programs. And this statistic people are always uh, surprised by, but between our physician clinics and the hospital, we do over a million, about a million and a half outpatient visits every year. Okay, say that again. <laughs> that is a lot of contacts, over a million contacts. Ministry opportunities is what it is. Absolutely. A million contacts. Okay. That is amazing. And I think it demonstrates, and I'm going to talk all through this, the connectedness between our physician clinics and the hospital and that we're really building off of that more and more to provide more of a singular patient experience and I'll talk a little bit more about that. We do have over 700 faculty physicians, 55 specialties and subspecialties, and then close to 40,000 admissions uh, every year. And I think we balance the responsibility all the time of making certain that the patients have that patient-centered care, and that students have an exquisite teaching experience uh, so that we can, as we send them out worldwide, already have demonstrated to them the best setting for what they would be looking for and in many cases taking a lead in replicating around the country. Uh, if we look at by facility, and I wish I had uh, pictures of each of the administrators. We have administrators at each of these sites that I have the privilege of coordinating. Uh, Daniel Fontura is uh, the executive that leads our university hospital and has a core of physicians that serve in, in advisory capacity department chairs for him. Um, this is our largest facility, 427 beds, um, large intensive care unit. We are a level one trauma center, which is the highest uh, level for trauma uh, in the area. Uh, we're well known for our Cancer Institute and of course our Proton Treatment Center I know that people are aware of. Our International Heart Institute has been one of our historic strengths and as you know with Dr. Bailey and the first infant heart transplant uh, in the world. You just celebrated that what 25th anniversary I think. So uh, for the heart transplant, yeah. um, I've forgotten the, the, yeah. the birth date but yeah, it, was it was the yeah. 25th. Right. And then of course our Transplant Institute which we continue to uh, build and grow. Our children's hospital is located at the same site. So when you look at the facility visually, people often think it's the one very hospital. same facility, one, one hospital. But we really actually run it like two, and, and we have uh, two patient uh, populations. Zare Serafian is the administrator of our children's hospital. And we provide a level of subspecialty care in this facility that takes care of about a third of the state of California. Um, we do, uh, if you are looking at the slides right now, about 1,100 transports from community hospitals on an annual basis. Uh, we do have a California Children's Services designation, which means that we have all the, the subspecialty care. And we're also a level one pediatric uh, trauma center as well. So it's not uncommon, I know you've seen it, Lynn, where we have two different helicopters on coming each end in. of the building coming in uh, at the same time, one for our children's facility and one for our adult. We are very blessed. Uh, children's services, um, sometimes I heard, hear the phrase, little people, little money. And um, they are not reimbursed by the state or federal government as well. And yet, despite that, we have been able to invest in this important program uh, and make services available for children. Um, Loma Linda has embraced this need and we have subspecialists that are very difficult and rare to find and who provide such unique compassionate care. Um, when I ever feel the pressure of my role, 
Uh, one of the things I most enjoy doing is to go up to our ne neonatal intensive care unit, um, 82 beds, which is one of the largest in the country, and see our very compassionate team up there, physicians and nurses and others, taking care of these little tiny babies, knowing that if they were not at a place like Loma Linda, they would not survive. And so we're very proud of, of this uh, signature program for us and what it does for this community. And when we're talking about the Children's Hospital, we're talking about an area that has been a growing and expanding population. It so, really has. Uh, with, with, so we got some critical needs uh, addressing uh, the Children's uh, Hospital. I mean, growing population and trying to meet the growing needs out there. It is, and, and most community hospitals really can't recruit subspecialists yeah. that could take care of, of children like that. And again, because of the vision of people here for many, many years who have seen the need and who have worked to create that need, our foundation, which I know you're mm -hmm. well acquainted right. with, has worked very, very hard to support us from a fundraising standpoint, which we absolutely critically have to have that kind of help to be able to afford um, the level of support that we have for our children. Yeah. Um, the East Campus um, is a hospital that was started in the community several years ago and that before I came uh, was added to the Loma Linda um, organization. And the building that is on the screen here is one that just opened. Uh, this is a new rehab uh, f uh, facility that we have done. It's uh, named after Vi and Tom Sapara who made a lead gift for us. And because rehab patients are often in the hospital for a longer period of time. They have a longer length of stay. We, and I should give credit here, the administrator for this facility is uh, named Michael Jackson. He often tells me he's the original Michael Jackson. The one that doesn't sing. The one that doesn't <laughs> sing. Um, had great vision for uh, incorporating sensitive elements for how people heal. Uh, research really does demonstrate that what people experience from their senses, what they see, hear, smell. Mm -hmm. They bake cookies, uh, right. as an example, on, on uh, this campus to aid in the healing process. They can't do that on all, all units because sometimes that odor right. would yeah. make somebody sick too, so you have to be sensitive. But they've really been thoughtful about that. They have a healing park, they engage the community, and, and uh, really have uh, worked with our physicians to create a seamless experience from the outpatient to the inpatient. Our next facility is um, our newest one to, to this point in time for uh, actual hospital uh, complete site, and that is our heart and surgical hospital, um, 24 beds. Um, this was initially built by a group of physicians in the community who wanted to do more of a patient-centric approach. So this is the only facility we have that's fully private rooms. And uh, it allows us to create a venue for patients and really for even some of our teaching that will be experienced in much of, of the country now as our students go out. Patients love this. We're doing a lot of surgical cases there. It actually has more uh, capacity for outpatient work, so short stays. Uh, we're right now in the process of moving some of our cardiac cases down there and building off of some of the laparoscopic and robotic uh, work that is where surgical services are, are really heading in the future. Jesse Mock is the administrator uh, for this campus. And again, it's a first class facility. Yeah. It really is. Um, I actually have had a few patients call me and tell me that they absolutely did not want to leave. <laughs> and uh, the administrator told me that uh, it's the only time in his career that somebody thanked him for their GI. Really? Uh, and so you don't usually think that people would be excited about their GI yeah. procedure, but uh, he they, they enjoyed it. <laughs> they enjoyed it. So <laughs> we, we, we thought that was a good thing. Um, our Behavioral Medicine Center is one of the programs that I'm so proud that Loma Linda has invested in. Behavioral services are not paid for well in the United States. I think it's a, sh a real shame that um, people with uh, problems uh, either from addictions or eating disorders or mental health disorders are really not cared for adequately in the United States. Forgotten and neglected and yeah, nobody likes to talk about it almost. No, yeah. it's still something people like to 
not talk about yeah. and communities don't like to to bring to their attention but there's tremendous need and Loma Linda made a decision many years ago that for both teaching purposes and for the right thing to do if you are talking about a whole person you really can't leave out the emotional right. uh, part of an individual so uh, our administrator there is Jill Pollock uh, again working with um, a great group of physicians, Bill Murdoch, our medical director there. And we have programs that uh, treat children, adolescents, and adults. We've had children as young as three years of age hmm. uh, in an inpatient setting. Yeah. And so uh, a real need and a program that continues to grow for us. We recently opened a behavioral health institute uh, as a part of this campus which has enabled us to bring together multiple services that deal in this area. So family services, and our psychologists, our psychiatrists, all uh, working for research and teaching and clinical care all in one setting. And it's one of the few places uh, in the United States that actually has that. There's some amazing stories coming out of there because I've interviewed a couple of the people and it's just, it's phenomenal what is taking place there. It's truly life changing. Yeah, it really is. Uh, people in, for the entire family. It, it yeah. really is, and the sustainability of that. I think cases where people were just so addicted to cocaine mm -hmm. and other things where it seems to people like you and me who oh, don't deal yeah. in, in those issues, hopeless. Right. And they do provide hope and actually change people's lives, so mm. um, it is a wonderful program. Uh, this is the new hospital that we are eagerly awaiting and believe will open next spring. And the history of this hospital is very interesting. Um, we identified, uh, it's about 25 miles away, and we identified that a group of physicians had decided that they were unhappy with the options available to them in Murrieta and were looking for a partner. And uh, we were looking at ways to expand our mission. And so Mel Sauter, who is our uh, Senior Vice President for Business Development, began to enter into a dialogue with them. They had already purchased the land. They had designed the hospital, demitted, had admitted it to our state uh, agency, had gotten approval for that. And so we joined it uh, a little late, but we were able to, after a few months, uh, put together a joint venture that will enable us to carry the Loma Linda University a Medical Center Marietta name to that community. The community has been beyond th enthusiastic uh, about this. Um, we were just talking yesterday in a meeting that I don't think those of us who work in Loma Linda often stop to think about what that name conveys uh, to the community and it's more than medical care. It's um, often, not in every situation, but often associated with integrity and compassion. And so people have greeted us down there very warmly. So we so want to, to deserve and uh, earn the respect that they have already shown to us. So for our listening audience, Murrieta is south of us, yes, about 25 miles away. Yes. So what we're really talking about is another campus then, another Loma Linda campus. That's correct. Wow. Uh, we own around 40 acres, okay. and so even though this is 106 beds, uh, we do envision that it will have opportunity for growth. Uh, we also envision that it can be an additional teaching venue for us. So it will be a full-scale general uh, medical uh, facility. We'll have a, an emergency room. We're going to actually open with an open heart uh, program down there, which will be very first in the region. Uh, we're having to work hard to pull all of that together. Um, and then, obviously, the medical and surgical services that you would expect in a community. That is absolutely amazing. I mean, we're talking about expanding and broadening the ministry opportunities here of yes. Loma Linda then. Yes. Oh, that is great. <clears throat> the interesting kind of sidebar is that um, a couple months ago, the sister city for Marietta, Temecula, um, also began dialoguing with us. And um, it's been fun to see those two communities side by side who have historically been very competitive, beginning to talk more and more about treating themselves like the Twin Cities and trying to collaborate and, co and cooperate. And they have approached us about, uh, we would like Loma Linda to 
consider us as a site for medical services. So we are right now working with both cities to say, uh, as we think about the region down there, would we be willing to consider growing in a couple different sites as opposed to on a, on a single site? And we've certainly not made any decisions about that. That'll take us probably at least a year to evaluate. But It's kind of exploratory. But it yeah. demonstrates, I think... They're asking for help. Then. Exactly, yeah. and that the community is so eager to, to have Loma Linda and our physicians specifically to, to be added to that community. Oh, that, that is amazing. So that's an overview of, the, of uh, who we are, and if, if we still have a little bit of time, I thought I'd talk about kind of where we're going as an I, organization. Yeah, I think it's important. We've, we've got a few minutes here yet. So uh, tell us, tell us uh, we've got a strategic plan up there for the next uh, five years. Yes. Tell us a little bit. Um, we, we, as you know, Lynn, have just completed a five-year plan. That was a 2009 to, um, I'm sorry, 2004 to 2009 plan. And when we completed that, our board, the, uh, the Academic Health Science Board, which is over the university yeah. and the hospitals, um, requested that we do an organization-wide plan. And so uh, that board of trustees put together uh, the five key areas that you see on the slide here for us to focus on and then they asked both the university and the physicians and hospital uh, as a team to bring forward specific recommendations for implementation. And a closer cooperation probably than ever before if I'm understanding People things. who yeah. have worked here many years tell me yeah. that they that it's unprecedented yeah. and what we're really trying to do is to get the wild ducks our geese, yeah, you know, really all kind of together. flying in yeah. the same direction, and this is our effort to do that. So there are five key focus areas, uh, continuing to build on our world-class distinction, continuing to focus on patient safety, quality, uh, our service excellence, working on teamwork and synergy uh, across the organization and in the community, partnerships, both international and regional, and then leadership and stewardship, knowing that we do need to be fiduciarily responsible and that uh, for continuity, we need to really be thoughtful about our leadership uh, succession plans and also um, how we develop our own leadership. I would say about this plan that there are two really important differences in this plan from what we've had in the past that I'm very excited about. Uh, one of those is the role that physicians have played. Um, the first time we did the plan, when I came, physicians were a little skeptical because plans can just sit in the shelf and never be referred to. And I heard that a lot of times. But because we have deliberately and systematically implemented it, they knew that we really did use this as direction. And they have stepped to the plate in a really impressive way and have really taken a leadership role in helping us define where we think we need to be responding with some of the challenges in healthcare. So we're really talking about a real partnership. We really are. Uh -huh. uh, Dr. Roger Hadley, Dr. Richard Peverini, our department chairs have really provided the leadership for this plan and it's my privilege to serve them uh, as we really think and respond to uh, where we think healthcare is going. The other difference is that it recognizes that accountable care organizations and partnerships with existing physicians, community physicians, community hospitals is really going to be more necessary than probably ever to be able to reduce our costs and improve quality going forward. Of course, that's all built off of our base, and you can see it on there, continuing to focus on our mission and our vision and our values. Well, we've got just a couple of minutes left here. Uh, what, what would you tell our, our listening audience as we're looking to the future and of all the different things that are going on, um, what excites you the most? I'm excited to be the right arm uh, for the church and for the um, ministry, realizing that healthcare really is a ministry and that we can do that in a way that helps bring people to a better knowledge and awareness and appreciation of God's love for us as individuals. Well, as you know, I've, I've worked at virtually every level in the church and I've been here now for 10 years and I've never been so excited 
as to the ministry opportunities that we're presented with day after day after day. As people come here, broken lives, fearful of the future, and they come here and uh, they they see a glimpse of the of the healing ministry of Jesus Christ, and lives are being trans transformed mentally and physically and spiritually and emotionally. And, uh, you know, the people that are, are working here at Loma Linda, it's not just a job for most of them. That's true. It's a, it's a ministry for them. I mean, many of them could go somewhere else and be making more money. But uh, they, they choose to remain here. Um, for for our, the listening audience, you know, we've, we've uh, interviewed many, many different patients here in the last couple of years. And uh, Ruthita here has given us a, an overview of what has been taking place in some of the plans for the future. Now we have five hospitals now, and we've got one that's uh, gonna be coming up when? Next spring. Next spring, and there's a couple of communities that are kind of exploring right. some, uh, some possibilities for us. Well, Ruthita, it's been great having you here on, uh, on LOBN, and for the listening audience to be able to really see the the huge ministry that's going on. We think of Loma Linda, we think of just one little building there in the medical center, but uh, we've really got a number of different uh, uh, hospitals and, and uh, opportunities for people to be changed physically, emotionally, spiritually, and mentally. Thank you for your leadership. Thank you for joining us here on the program. And again, for those that are looking on, I know that just this week, some of you have received some sobering news Something about your health, a health challenge. Uh, could be cancer, could be something else. But I want you to know that God's got a plan for your life. If you'll look to Him, give Him, give him an opportunity. He's wait, waiting to open and close doors so that His will will be made known to you. Until we meet next week, God bless you each one. Give Him a chance. Thank you so much.